Well, I'm out today on the Red Revolt and the weather is beautiful. Haven't really got anything too much to say today. No specific topic, put it that way. So, you'll just have to listen to me talking rubbish. I know most of you will be going, yeah, but what's the difference, Steve? You always talk rubbish. But the weather's beautiful. And how could you not film on a day like today? Ah, there we go. This is so common these days. They've put up some cones. Put up some traffic lights and they're not doing anything. With all the roadworks going on, you'd think that Britain would have the best roads in the world. And nothing could be further from the truth. Britain does in fact have some of the worst roads in the world. There's quite literally no maintenance being done. These great big potholes on motorways and major trunk roads. Huge swathes of the national road network, including motorways, are closed every night, supposedly for roadworks. And then you come back the next day and they haven't done anything. <laughs> and it's quite controversial to say uh, that the only road building and maintenance was done with EU funding. And yet people still voted to leave. When I say controversial, it's kind of a strange thing. The thing that's controversial about it is talking about it. Not the fact that it's all gone wrong. I've only ever been up here once more suited to a mountain bike than a gravel bike. But I thought I'd give it a try. Well, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Quite steep, though. Whew. I'm a little bit out of breath. Having a bit of a dilemma at the moment. I'm wondering whether to get a mountain bike which has been brought about really I'm sorry I'm going to bore you with a long story now the, uh, the fast road just keeps collapsing underneath me because I'm too heavy for it and the problem is to get new wheels with a higher weight limit is difficult because it's a disc brake quick release. I mean obviously I could get brand new wheels but that's going to cost more than the bike. So that doesn't seem worth it to me. And I've been searching everywhere to see if I can get a set of wheels but I can't. And every now and then, every now and then when you get a an advert comes up for quick release disc brake wheels and you check them out and they've got a system weight limit of 100 kilos and it's not enough for me I'm embarrassed to say anyway while I was perusing adverts I saw a Trek Dumani quite cheap and I thought, well, that might be the answer. Get a Dumani 
throw off the cheap component, put the 105 boot set from the fast road on it, because the frame has got through axles. And that opens up a whole lot more opportunity to find a nice set of wheels. Right next to it was an advert for a Trek X caliber. Oh, well, that might be a nice thing to have with a flat bar bike. So I, I started reading up about it. And of course, the big advantage is it's got a weight limit of 136 kilos or 300 pounds, which is more than enough for me. So I started looking at the Excalibur and I found out it's been discontinued. Which is of course why they're selling the ones they've got off quite cheap. But even so, you start disappearing down a rabbit hole really. Because you think, well, if that's discontinued, Perhaps I should get a Pro Calibre. Pro Calibre 6 looks really nice. But for a little bit more money, you could get a Pro Calibre 8. And for a little bit more money, well, you could have a carbon frame. But that would be a lower spec bike. So, well, what if I get a carbon frame and go up a level? And that's how these things work. This is why manufacturers have all of these different levels of spec. Because if they told you the entry level was £700 and the top end was £3,000, you'd say, I'll have the entry level. But it's the way they get you to look at the next spec up and then the next one after that, like a staircase. And then before you know it, you are looking at the £3,000 one Right, there's a steep hill coming up, so I've got to shut up because I'll be out of breath. Anyway, back to the story. So, here I am looking at these really expensive mountain bikes and thinking, yeah, they'd be really cool. And then reality struck, and I thought, where am I going to ride a mountain bike? And I started thinking of all the trails and things. And I was thinking, yeah, but I can do most of that on my gravel bike. I mean, sure, there are places you can take your bike to and go and ride some trails. But the thing I like most about cycling is I can do it from home. I played a bit of golf in my younger days. And you have to book to go and play. And, and then you've got to get in your car to go there. You can't just get up in the morning and think, oh, it's a lovely day, I'll go and play. Whereas with a bike, you can. You just get up and you look at the weather and go, I'm going riding. So let me know what you think in the comments below. And there's is de rigueur these days on the YouTube. I've got to say, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. Look at me down with the kids. Don't click the like button, smash it.